Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Recently, I've had a lot of people ask for a video on how to be more productive in Visual Studio, how to navigate around, and just get things done quicker. So this is going to be that video. We're going to start by just opening up this knockback ability script, and I'm going to run you through some of my favorite hotkeys for navigation. So I'd say it's really important to get used to using the home and end keys when you're in Visual Studio. If you just hit end, you'll see it just goes to the end of the current line, and home goes to the beginning of the current line. But that's not all that they're useful for. If you're at the beginning of the line and you hit end while you're holding shift, you see it actually selects the entire line. And then the same would be true if I were maybe over here and I just wanted to grab everything from attack radius to the end. I hold shift and hit end, and there we go. The other thing you can do is hold control and end to go to the end of the file and control and home to go to the beginning of the file. And of course, holding control and shift and end will select all the way to the end of the file. You know, have it all actually be there selected. I could delete the entire thing like that. Of course, control Z is the standard undo, which just undoes that whole thing. You can also just hold down control and use the arrow keys on your keyboard to skip around word by word. So you see if I go over here and I just hit control, holding control and hitting left arrow, I'm skipping over word by word. I can also hold shift and control to select that way. So if I ever need to just select a chunk of code, a lot of the time what I'll do is go to the beginning of the thing, hold control and shift, hit the arrow a couple times, maybe like that, and delete it. But when I'm deleting things, another hotkey that I really like to use is just being on a line. If you hold shift and hit delete, the entire line gets deleted. So you don't need to go through and select the entire thing like this, hit delete and hit delete again. You can just hit shift delete and the whole thing's gone. And hit control Z a couple times to undo that. Now when you want to search for something, there are actually quite a few ways to do it. The first way to do it is just find the text that you want, double click it to select it, and hit control F and it'll pop up in this search dialog. You can type whatever you want there, but the thing that's double clicked and selected will show up automatically. Then I can just hit enter and find all of the references to that thing, or at least all of the strings that match in my existing file. Now if I want to search outside the file, I can hold down control and shift and hit F, and I'll get this find in files or find and replace dialog. This allows me to search across multiple files. So if I wanted to see how many things have an attack radius, for instance, I just type that in and I'll get a nice list of search results right here that I can double click on to go to. And it looks like it's in two different files referenced one time in each file. Now that may not always work well for some other things. Say I wanted to find damage. If I just do a search for the word damage in here, you'll see that suddenly a whole bunch of things show up. It's in license files and everything else because it's just doing a string search. Instead, what I can do is select this damage variable, this public integer, and hold down shift and hit F12. This will bring up the references window that shows us everywhere that this variable is referenced. This button here docks it, and then I can just drag it up a little bit and see every file that this variable is used in and the part where it's used. So here you'll see we're registering for an event on a character, deregistering for that event, we can click in here to see it's in attacker, it's in that knockback. And the reason this is going across so many things is that it's actually defined in an interface named iDamage. And what if we wanted to rename this? So say we wanted our damage variable to be not named damage, but damage dealt, something like that. If I just start typing and rename it, hit F6 to do a build, F6 is the build hotkey by the way, and see I got a lot of errors. So what I can do is undo that and just select this text, hit F2, and then move to the right, I just hit the right arrow once, and name this damage dealt. And now what it's done is gone through and updated every reference to it. So again, if I hold shift and hit F12, you see that all of these references now say damage dealt. It's been renamed everywhere just by using F2. Now I'm gonna change that back real quick. F2 again, just move to the right one arrow, go back and hit enter to apply the changes. Now let's go over to a usage of this damage variable. And let's say I'm looking at this and I wanna know what this damage is, where it's defined. Again, I could hit Shift F12, find all of them, and then figure out which one it is. But I can also just select it and hit F12 to go straight to the definition. Another hotkey a lot of people don't know about is if I hold down Control, there we go, and use the mouse and mouse over things, see the little underline there, when I click on it, it's actually gonna go to the definition of it. It's just like hitting F12, but you're holding down control and clicking. Another neat little shortcut to get there. 
Now, how do you find something if you know what it is you want to find, you're just not sure where it's at? Well, what I like to use is control and comma to bring up the go to all menu. In here, I can just start typing the class name. Say I want to find my enemy. And you see, I just typed E-N and I'm starting to find everything that begins with E-N-E-M-Y. Enemy is right there. And if I want to find a specific thing, what I'll usually do is type in the full file name and .cs to just go straight to the class. A lot of time that's just a little bit quicker than diving through the solution explorer, trying to find the correct file in the correct place. So remember just control period, start typing, there I want to find my character, and I wanted this one right here because that's the class definition. Now let's look at a case where I want to add something to multiple lines and I want to add the same thing. For example, let's say I wanted to just add the this keyword before these. I don't really need to. But it's a good example for this. What I can do is hold down Alt before I click here, click and then drag down. And you'll see that all three of these lines have a little blue line there. In fact, if I hold Alt, click and drag down here, you'll see that you know, they have a little bit bigger area. And what I can do is just start typing there and it'll go on to every single line. It'll just kind of match. And I can do the same for deleting. So say I wanted to just get rid of the second character here, just go select them all and hit delete and then start typing some random words. Not really useful in this case, but a lot of the times you go through and rename a lot of things or change a variable or change a source of something, and it can be really helpful to save you a lot of time so you're not copy pasting over and over. And let's clean that back up. Go select those again and hit tab to indent them back in. Now let's create a new mono behavior. I'm gonna right click, hit create, and we're gonna call this fly. This will just be a fly ability. I'm gonna open that up and let's take a look. The first thing you notice is the formatting is all off. It doesn't match my normal stuff. It doesn't match the C-sharp standards. What I can do is hold down control, hit K, still holding control, hit D, and you see the formatting gets cleaned right up so that the braces are on the new line. There's no extra weird space there and everything looks just right. Now another thing I like to do after deleting all of these is start to cache some variables. So I'll generally say private void awake and in here I'll want to cache some things. So let's say I need to cache my character. What I'll usually do is start typing character like that, hit escape so that I don't get the class auto completed, equals get component character, just like that. And then I hit control period and hit enter to just generate that field. I don't need to copy and paste it, type it up there, manually do it. The same works for methods. So say I need my fly to do some sort of initialize method. So like if not initialized, just like that, then initialize. Whoops, and hit control Z a couple times to undo that autocomplete. There we go, and then add that semicolon. Then what I'll do once I've stubbed this out is just hit control period, and you see the default option there is generate method, so I just hit enter. Then I'll go up to here, hit control period, and enter. And now both of my methods are generated, and I've got some code that's pretty easy to read. I know, hey, if it's not initialized, we're gonna initialize, and I've got stubs for both of these ready to go. Now these next two are gonna be really useful if you don't know all of the built-in mono behaviors by heart. So a lot of the time I'll start typing and I'll just do like a void update and I know that that's gonna be there and I'll hit enter and it'll auto complete. But say I don't know what they're called or I have some idea but I'm not quite sure. What I can do is hold down control and shift and hit M to bring up a full dialogue of all of the Unity messages that are available. These are all of the things that are built into the mono behavior that'll get called back. Then I can select the ones that I want. Maybe I needed on trigger, enter and exit 2D. I can check both of those and hit okay. They'll get automatically added in with the correct syntax. Another option to do that is control shift Q. Here, let's delete these. And if we hit control shift and Q, we just get it as a little searchable box. And I can start typing here and get the same exact results just in a slightly smaller format. Auto completion isn't just for methods though. One of the things I use it for most often is these for loops. So here I've got a case where we attack and we do an overlap sphere, get a bunch of hit results and then loop over them. And I don't just type out these for loops. Instead, what I normally do is just do for and then I hit tab, hit tab, hit tab. And then I'd type in hit count right there. And I don't even type in the full hit count. Notice that I just typed HIT and hit enter and auto completed to the right thing. And of course this also works for a for each loop. So I do for E. Or, there you go, for EA, hit tab, 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 tab. I can go right over this attack results collection and I'll get the item right there. And again, remember if I hit tab, I go back over to it. So here I could say like hit result if I wanted to name it. 
The last one I want to cover today actually requires a little bit of setup. So I've got a couple using statements here that aren't being used. And if I click here, I can check this box to remove unnecessary using statements. That'll work. But I like keyboard shortcuts. So if you go to here, go to edit, go to IntelliSense, and look here, you'll see remove and sort usings is control shift U. I've customized it to that for myself. You can adjust it to, for yourself under tools, options, and then you go to keyboard and it's edit dot, give it a second, remove and sort. So you can just select that and assign your own hotkey. And then what I usually do is just hold control and shift, hit U, clean those right up and get them out of my files. So these are the things that I use to get around quickly. Like I said, they save me a lot of time. I highly recommend you at the very least start to remember and use control period. It'll save you countless time just you know, adding in those fields, adding in those methods and avoiding having to type them, avoiding possible mistakes. Also again, shift F12 to find all references and always use F2 to rename. Don't rename them manually. And if you have some suggestions of your own, some hotkeys that you think I missed or I probably did miss or other ones that other people might be interested in, please drop them in a comment below and share, help everybody else get better. I'm always looking for new tips and tricks. So if you got some, let me know. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the alert button, all the other cool stuff. All right, thanks again.